Welcome everybody to the demonstration today. So we'll start off the demonstration by calculating a plan. So we'll start with calculating a regenerative plan. We're going to be shown a request screen once we calculate the plan. We can run this plan in three different ways really. So you see we have an MPS or an MRP suggestion. MPS is going to refer to our master production schedule. So this is really based off dependent demand. So actual sales order demand and sales forecasted demand. Suggestions when we run the MPS schedule aren't going to be limited to production orders. We could also see purchase orders in here as well, anything that is dependent demand. And then we can also run for MRP, which is material resource planning. And that is really going to be for any orders that we need to make because of an MPS order. So it's possible for us to run one at a time if you have multiple planners in your organization. Or if we do the appropriate setups, you can also run both MRP and MPS at the same time. In here, we are also going to have access to the starting date. So this is our planning starting date. Any date before this date we put in here is going to be considered already accounted for in the system. So if you have sales orders that you haven't shipped before this date, they're really not going to be taken into account. We also have an ending date, so this is really your planning horizon. How far out do we want to calculate a plan for? And we have the ability to include any forecasts. If you do include a forecast, you have the ability to put a date in here where you want to exclude any demand before a certain date and consider it hit. So if you didn't really hit your forecast for last February, you can exclude any of those forecasted items from this calculation. You're also going to get all of your standard nav filters at the bottom here, so these can really help out if you have multiple planners that are going to plan for certain groups of items. We can filter out the list however you want in here before you even calculate a plan. So we're going to hit OK here to calculate our plan, and we'll see a bunch of suggestions come up for me in the planning worksheets. So as the planning system runs, suggestions are going to really be driven by anticipated and actual demand as well as any of the inventory reordering parameters that we've put on item cards. The basis of this planning routine is really a gross to net calculation. Any net requirements are going to drive planned order releases and suggestions based on routing information for manufactured items and lead times for item cards. So as we look at the columns in the planning worksheet, I want to highlight some of the fields that you're going to see here. The first field that's going to be important is the warning field. So there's really three different types of messages we can see in the warning field. We can see attention in here. Attention is really going to show up for you in two different situations. One is going to be if the planning start date is earlier than your work date. So if we're working in a certain date and we want to plan for a couple weeks back, the demand for a couple weeks back is going to show up with an attention warning. You'll also see an attention warning if the planning line is really suggesting that you make a change to either a released purchase order or a released production order. Just calling to note that you might get an error if you try to change an order that's already released. We could also see an exception warning. Exceptions are really going to show up to you if the projected inventory is going to drop below the item safety stock quantity and NAV is going to suggest a supply to bring you back up to your safety stock. The third type of warning we can see here that's not shown in my particular run is going to be an emergency. Emergency is going to show for you whenever the inventory is projected to be negative at the date of your planning run. So all these messages you can click in here to get more information about what that warning actually is. It will give you information about why it's a warning. The next column I added in here, which isn't typically shown on the planning worksheets, which could be a good field to add for you, is this planning flexibility field. It's going to default in here to unlimited for all of your lines. And what unlimited means is that any action we take on any of these suggestions could be available for replanning at a future date. So if demand changes, we may get a suggestion to cancel a particular line. As a user, you have the ability to change this planning flexibility from unlimited to none. What this means is you're really locking in that suggestion. So this particular line is telling me to make a production order for 500 bicycles. If I decide that this is a very important production order for me, I want to make sure that it runs on this particular date, 
then I can change that planning flexibility from unlimited to none. That's going to tell the system that this order set on this date and that we want to make sure that it stays at that date and it isn't changed. So the system would no longer replan this order once I've created it and it would lock it down. So that would be important if maybe you've hired extra staff, you have visitors coming to watch a particular item run and you want to make sure it doesn't get replanned or canceled out of the system. Another field that's going to be very important to us is this action message field. So NAV is going to suggest specific items and specific actions for us. So we can see five different types of action messages in here. We can see suggestions for new orders. So the system suggesting we create a new order because of new demand. We could see suggestions to change the quantity of existing orders. So our demand has changed and because of that we need to change the quantity. If you're getting a suggestion to change a quantity, you'll see what the original quantity of your order is and what the suggested new quantity of your order is. We could see messages to reschedule an order. So if demand's been pushed up or pushed out, NAV could tell us to reschedule an order to a date in the future, a date in the past. And then in this case, we can also see suggestions to reschedule and also change the quantity at the same time. So we don't need to see two suggestions for one real action to an order. And then if our demand changes or goes away altogether, we could see messages to cancel orders. You'll see here on the reference order type that we could see production orders, transfer orders, purchase orders. So for production orders, you guys are going to want to pay attention to starting date and ending date and time. So these fields can be really important because they directly relate back to the routing for your items. So this is how long NAV thinks it's going to take to make a particular production order. So if you see any inconsistencies in here, it could mean that your routings need to be changed. So it could mean that our routings need to be changed to be more accurate with our system. For any purchase orders suggested by the system, you want to make sure that we pay attention to the vendor number. So on all these purchases, you can see that I have a vendor filled in. NAV is actually going to make these orders for us. So if we don't have a vendor number in these fields, then it's not going to know what vendor to create the production order for. A couple other important fields. Obviously, we're going to get a description of the items the system's suggesting we make our orders for. If it's suggesting a change, you'll see the original quantity of the order, what the new quantity is. And note that as you scrub these lines, you can change these quantity fields. So if a suggestion isn't exactly what you want it to be, it is possible for you to change that field to get it more in line with how you would purchase from a vendor or how you would make on a production floor. If the order came because of an MPS run, you'll see a checkbox on this MPS order so you can know that that's top level dependent demand and then any suggestions in here without a check is going to be because it's an MRP order. So if there's any particular line on here that you're not quite sure why NAV has suggested that or the quantity that it's suggesting, you do have access to all the item planning and planning availability screens or analysis screens, if you will. So on the home ribbon, if we check our item availability, we've got access to various availability screens. So I can see availability by event. So if I look at the availability by event, it's going to show me all the different events that are going to happen to an item. Let's go down to one of my purchase ones so we can see a little more information. We can view all these screens by any period you like, so day, week, month, quarter. And it'll show you the week or the period, and we can expand all that to see all the different purchase orders, supplies, sales orders, demands on the system. And we can also include or exclude planning suggestions. So we can see what our current plan is. And if we take a look at just this one item and scroll all the way to the end here, you can see projected inventory, so I can see at the end of what I currently have out there, I'm projected to have 85 of this item still on hand. And then we can also include our planning suggestions, so we can see how all those changes and new actions would affect my total overall plan. So we can see planning suggestions in here as well. Another good way to really be able to 
analyze your availability is to look at the item availability by period. So this is going to be your more standard supply and demand screen. This again can be viewed by day, week, month, any period you want to. And we can see it as we go across here, it'll show us the period across the left and various fields across the top. So I can see gross requirements. I can see how much I've already got of this particular item on a purchase order or a sales order, anything on hand. If the planning is suggesting I make any new purchase orders or any scheduled receipts or POs coming in. All those numbers are going to net to come out with a projected available balance at any given date. So I can see at any given date what NAV is projecting I'll have on hand after all of my orders. All of these numbers are hyperlinked, so I can always drill in to see the underlying information. So if I want to know any of the purchase orders that make up this 185 number, I can drill in there and see the underlying information. So we can also look at our item availability by variant, if you use variants in your system, also by location. So if we want to see what our projected balance is at any given location across any given time frame, we can see that as well. Again, these are all going to be hyperlinks, so I can see that this gross requirement at my blue warehouse is made up of a transfer order that's going to the red warehouse. You can drill in to all these numbers to see the underlying documents. I know looking at numbers and fields and rows of numbers can get tedious at times, so NAV's also added an item availability by timeline. So if you want to see more of a graphical view of the supplies and demands on the system, we can view an item availability by timeline. So we can see all of the ups and downs in our inventory levels, and we can show what our projected availability is, and then we can also include any planning suggestions. So planning suggestions are in green. And you can see that once I include those, it really works to normalize my inventory and keep it at a base level of at a minimum zero or any safety stock that we build in for items. So it can be a good way to get a quick visual representation of what's going to happen with all my supplies if I accept the action messages on a particular item. So as we get these suggestions, we're going to want to go ahead and scrub the data, determine what we agree with in our plan and what we don't. Any suggestions that include a warning from NAV will come in defaulted with our accept action message field not checked in. Anything where there really is no warning, we could hit that without problem, will get a checkbox automatically. So you'll go through and actually place checks where you agree with the plan, and you can make any changes to quantities or dates before you do so to get it more in line with what you would do. As you go through and check these, once you're done with your plan, you're going to want to up on the ribbon click the carry out action message button. So carrying out action messages is going to actually do all these actions for us. So the system will create new production orders for you. It'll change any existing purchase orders or production orders. It will actually make all those changes for you. And you get a couple options on how you can do that. So for production orders, I can create firm plan or plan production orders. I could also create the firm plan and print out a job card or a traveler. You might want to get deliver out to the production floor. For assembly orders, we can create the assembly orders automatically, or we can create them and also print out any traveler document you might have. For purchase orders and transfer orders, we get a couple different suggestions. So we can make the purchase orders automatically, or if you have multiple people planning and you have maybe a manager that wants to approve any of the suggested purchase orders before you actually turn them into purchase orders, we can copy all these approved suggestions over to the requisition worksheet. So then any manager or department head would just have one worksheet to go through and see all the suggested purchase orders you'd like to make. Same thing for any transfer order suggestions. So we can create the transfer orders or we can copy those over to the requisition worksheet as well for any kind of approval. And then for transfer orders, you also have the option of combining them all into one transfer order. Or if we don't have a checkbox there, basically every line would be a separate transfer order in the system. So once we make our 
choices in here, go ahead and click OK. Nav is going to go ahead and do all the actions and the suggestions. So we'll get purchase orders created for us. We will get production orders created for us. So if we look at purchase orders, everything will be created for us. It's going to come in in a status of open. So you still would want to open these up, make sure everything looks good, and then if it's good, you can release the order. But Nav's always going to create them in an open status. So that's kind of an overall of the planning worksheets and how they simply function.